What is up guys, Church here, the project lead for the Apex Dracon, and I just wanted to make a video and give some people some idea of how the Apex Dracon works, how to spawn it in, how to get the loadout editor working, and how to make everything run so you can enjoy it the most. So let's go into the editor real quick, we'll just pop into Stratus. And when you're in here, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can use either Zeus, or you can spawn it directly. We'll spawn it, we'll do both actually, I'll show you both ways. So first thing you wanna spawn, is the person you're gonna be controlling, which you want to spawn if you go to class men uh, of the NATO faction and then go all the way to the bottom and pick UAV operator. This will automatically spawn you with the UAV terminal you need to actually make everything work. Next, we will spawn the actual Dracon itself. So you click on the little single unit spawn and go to blue four NATO class autonomous and then the Dracon is right there. It's a big, uh, aircraft so even though this is the icon for the other uav the greyhawk it's going to be a little bit bigger than this it probably almost reached my character from here um, keeping that in mind we also want to spawn a support unit a ammo truck so we'll go to empty because you don't need this to be uh, controlled by a uh, blue four whereas with the dracon you need to spawn a blue four apex dracon because if you don't, you'll have to hack into the Dracon in order to use it if you spawn an empty one. As for the truck though, we don't care if that has AI in it, so let's just spawn a typical empty Hemet truck. So we'll go to supports, then Hemet ammo, perfect. This will definitely be running into the drone, so we'll twist it that way and that should be good. So let's go ahead and preview this. All right, so you can see when I spawned in, the wing's almost hitting me in the face. This thing is pretty big, but now we can actually access it. So we'll go to our UAV terminal and we'll just connect the terminal to the UAV. Now we have control and that's great. Because this Hemet is so close to it, it's also gonna give us access to the support menu, which when we go close, you'll see there on the left, we have Apex support. When you click that, boom, brings up the Apex support tablet. This is where things get cool. Eventually we'll have multiple versions of the drone. We'll have a stealth version, which you can kind of see blurred out here. Um, and then a Hellad laser version, which they'll have their own benefits and stuff that outweigh them towards another one that will just give you an option to customize your drone towards the mission you're going at. Also, eventually, eventually we'll have some liveries, um, which are just aircraft skins. So camouflages, stuff that blended into their surroundings a little bit better. It'll be really cool. You'll notice first we have the service menu. So when you land and park next to a ammo truck, you can refuel and repair just by clicking. But when you want to actually adjust the payload, you just go over to the heavy thing and click right in the center of it. You can click actually anywhere on it. It'll bring up the payload option menu, so the arming screen for the Dracon Heavy, which is the version that we've released first. You can pick the internal bay, so we'll just put some, we'll put the large bomb in there, the JDAM, and we'll also pick some Hellfires and some GBU-12s. As you click those, like the second you click those, if you click the little off button, you'll notice it is already armed. Like, it puts them on immediately, which is pretty cool. Um, we might make it take a little bit of time just so it's a little bit more real realistic um, rather than just whoop, popping on, you know, but it does the job. Now, if you want to spawn it in with the Zeus module, all you got to do is just go to Blue 4, because again, we want that AI, go to Autonomous, grab the Dracon, same thing, just pop one down, and there's another Dracon, and we'll just twist it like that, so not that way, that way, and it, that should be close enough to also use the Apex support. Boom, and we can do the exact same thing. We'll put glide bombs in here, put a GBU-24 and Hellfires on the end. So, different loadout, but same idea. So now, when we wanna actually control them, we can just go directly into the UAV terminal and take control. So we'll control the driver, and we'll zoom out and turn it on, and we're started. Um, just for the sake of taking off quickly, I'm gonna not go to the runway. Um, right now, the drone is a little bit unbalanced when it comes to its flight model. We need to adjust the, sol the stall speeds and such, but because we've increased the speed of the drone so much, it takes off really quick. So doing this and going full speed, we'll be off the ground in a matter of seconds. Just like that. Gear up, flaps up, and you're ready to go. You notice the bay door is open, that is a not a bug, but it's right now because when you load it on, the first thing it selects is the center console, the center internal bay weapon. 
just click F or whatever your button is to change the weapons, um, and it'll switch to the Hellfires or something else, and it'll close that bay. The bay only opens when the internal bay is selected to fire. But we'll release controls of this, and we'll give it a little job. We'll send it to fly over here at 2,000 feet, never fire, and loiter. So it's going to come fly that way and fly in circles. Um, actually, let's go back into the UAV terminal, and while we're at it, we'll connect to this Dracon and control this one. We'll send this in a similar area at a similar altitude, never fire, and loiter. So if you notice this, so first off, one of the things we're working on fixing is the gunner position. When you click on control gunner, you'll notice you can see inside the drone. Eventually we'll make it so there's a black screen in front of here so that does not work. What you need to do is if you scroll down, you can deploy the camera. That actually, when we go into third person, when you see the deploy camera feature, will oop, shoot that right out of the bottom. And now you have full control of the camera it can withdraw and extract at the same time, and it's great. And you'll notice that Arma's UAV system is struggling a little bit. But um, that's this is not something, unfortunately, we can control. That's just how UAVs work. But as we... There we go. It's decided to fix itself. Was released the controls. It's it's just trying to kind of get into motion. It, it climbed to its altitude or it's working towards it, and now it's trying to do things. Unfortunately, because Arma doesn't use a barometric altimeter, which means it doesn't base its altitude off of sea level, um, it can cause some issues when flying the drones. But let's go into how these two can work together. This is going to be kind of a, a UAV tutorial. This works with other UAVs as well. So we'll spawn a couple enemies. So a little fire squad here that we'll maybe drop a bomb on and then maybe we'll do let's put a marid we'll use this uav to actually laze the target so if you click f a couple times you'll get to the laser marker this is extremely useful because it allows us to mark targets for the other uav to engage um, if you zoom in you'll notice the shake. Unfortunately, the shake, there's absolutely nothing we can do about this. Um, I'm actually gonna set the view distance just a little bit higher so we can see. There we go. Um, there's absolutely nothing we can do about the shake. The shake is, I mean, the only thing we could do is limit the drone speed. Um, right now, because of the way that Arma's UAV system works, speed makes this shake happen. Um, it's really unfortunate. We, our goal is to work and make a better UAV system um, or work with Bohemia to, to upgrade theirs, but it's something we have to deal with. But if you click Control T, it's gonna lock it on a position. We're actually gonna laze that spot. That's where those little guys are, you'll notice. If we flip that, you'll see the little dots where the guys are. We'll release this UAV's controls and go into the UAV terminal and connect to the other UAV where it now will be able to see those. So we're gonna actually set to manual fire and we'll pick, let's drop a big one. The drip, we'll drop the J dam on that, that little group of people. Actually, that's not enough people to drop the J dam. We'll save that for a building or something. But as you fly over towards where they're at, you'll actually see there's the laser target and it, it locked there for a second, but we're not gonna fire yet. We'll zip over to the other side of the map and because this thing is fast enough, it's really easy to readjust yourself for a bomb strike and it means you can drop it higher, farther away because of how fast it is. You pick up speed and look, we're going 800 kilometers an hour plus now. It means that bombing is gonna be awesome. But as we go towards that, you're gonna push your lock button. That's different for people. Some people it's T, some people it's tab. It'll bring up your little laser target there. And as we pick up speed and fly over it, you'll notice a little diamond that will appear. And once the diamond closes in and hits it will have locked and we have locked so we'll drop a bomb and we'll break off from that we'll release the UAV controls and just to watch it we will switch to this terminal control this gunner and let's switch out of night vision so we can watch what happens boom direct hit and if we go into Zeus I'm confident that killed just about everybody, yep, they're all dead. 
So really effective, we'll delete them just for the sake of having less stuff on the map. Let's actually go to the Hellfires. We'll switch to some Hellfires. Hellfire missiles, we have eight of them. You can have up to 16 of them on this drone. So if you're Hellfire crazy, go for it. Um, with the Hellfires, sometimes it's a little difficult to get a lock. It depends on how the vehicle is operated. So because this Marid has some people in it and it has a thermal signature, you'll notice it gets a target. Then there goes the locking mechanism. Simple fire and it'll be dead. Boom, hit and destroyed. So really, it's as easy as that, but we'll release the UAV controls and we'll go check out that Marid. And there it is, direct hit, it is gone. Um, really simple system, just like the other UAVs. This is really more of a UAV tutorial than a Dracon tutorial, but it gives you an idea of how it works. We have things that we want to fix with these drones. It's gonna take some time, unfortunately. Um, there's a lot that needs to be done with Arma system uh, to make it so these function a little bit better. You'll notice there are some severe issues. So if I spawn a new UAV, we'll say, and there's already an enemy on the field, it can cause issues, which is why you need to set the UAV a distance away from enemies so it doesn't have this issue. Um, but we'll spawn another UAV. And this one doesn't even have any weapons on it, but it will show you that just it doesn't matter. It's going to try to kill it. No matter what it is, it will try to kill it. We'll, oh, oh, we'll switch to our pistol. No, we'll take the UAV controls. And we'll go ahead and take it off. And we're not going to give it any commands yet. Like, we might try to give it a command, but it's just going to kind of do its own thing once it gets off the ground. So we'll lift it off the ground. Gear up. And release the UAV controls. And we'll kind of watch it from this position and we'll deploy the camera so we don't have to see that. And you'll notice it immediately is locking onto something. And I believe, yep, it's found that vehicle over there. Even if I try to tell it, hey, don't do that. Even if I say, hey, go here and go to another altitude, don't fire and fly in circles, it is not going to listen to me at all. It will fly directly over the commish and it will try to kill it. This always gets it killed, always. And it probably will right here when this commish sees it. But it's it's a bug. We don't know why it does that, but it's, it's trying to mix its predetermined AI. I don't know what. I really don't know why it does this. I know it's trying to kill targets that it sees, but at the same time, it's it's unfortunately it's a it's a bugged system. But hopefully, it gets worked out. I know Bohemia's got a lot on their plate right now, but it's something that as UAV pilots, it would really be awesome to see work out. So, but that gives you an example of everything, how everything works, and kind of how UAVs tend to work as well. If you have any questions, let me know. I am trying to answer as many as possible to make sure people get to enjoy this vehicle as much as we enjoyed making it. So thanks guys, and I'll talk to you soon.